What would you say to somebody who's perhaps working in a comms role or a digital role and what they're struggling with in the main is that they want to scale digital communications, realizing that the subject matter expert over in the, the research department has all of this knowledge, but they're completely allergic to social, allergic to digital, don't use it personally and feel that it's not their role. However, the comms person is saying, well, you have information that the public will just, you know, consume and consume and you're probably the hero. How, how can you negotiate those relationships? So that for me is all about being a coach and an advisor when you're a communication professional. And if you're working as a senior communication professional, those are the skills that you want to be looking at. So you've got to help people feel safe and you've got to help them um, understand that you're with them and that you're not putting them at risk because it is fear that drives a lot of that. There's a great book called Get Social, which I read uh, a few years ago, and it talks about that fear and overcoming that for leaders, which is often what it is. So for me, even applying my model to that is understand what's really making them not want to do it. <laughs> you know, have that conversation of, you know, what's stopping you? What's making you feel that you don't want to do this? Because quite often it might be the platform and then you can say, great, well, why don't you give me the content and I'll do it. And you have to gradually take them on that journey. If you then say to somebody straight away, right, here's a, you know, here's a Twitter account I've created for you, <laughs> go forth. You know, then they're not going to do it. So you've got to do those little we said earlier about what does good look like for internal communication I said for some people it will be an app for others it will be a notice board you know it doesn't mean that you're not going to get to the app in the end but you've got to take people on that journey you can't often go from nothing to amazing digital transformation because it takes a while for people to get there so have that end goal in mind of what you're aiming for if you've identified that person I want them to be doing thought leadership pieces I want them doing this 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 great give yourself you know maybe three to six months to get there and invest time in that person to help them get there. Um, and that's that's the difference is investing your time in enabling that to happen. And if you're very clear as that's your goal, then investing time in them will be really easy because it will become one of your priorities. That's brilliant advice. Communications professionals need to be coaches. I love it. And it rings true because any study that you read on why people leave their job and move to another company more often than not, the reason is not monetary. The reason is because they didn't feel valued. So yep. investing time, it makes so much sense when you say it like that, doesn't it? Yeah, and it, and it is um, everything. I talk a lot about busy being a myth. You know, people saying, oh, I'm really sorry, I've just been really busy. You know, it's, it's nonsense because actually all you've done is just not prioritise that piece of work. You know, it's, it's an easy thing to say, oh, I'm sorry, I haven't got back to you with that, I've been really busy. Well, why wouldn't you just say, oh, I'm sorry, I haven't got back to you with that. I've just had to prioritise some other things, which feels a bit weird, but it's absolutely true. And I'm very uh, clear, I suppose, in terms of the goals I'm trying to achieve. I always have been when I worked in-house. And it's it's if it's important to you, you'll you'll do it and you'll find the time to do it. 